Okay, um, now that we've made an actor and we've attached some components to it, if I drag this in, you can see we have our little actor that we created. Um, you can see the box component and then we can attach our mesh to that as well. Uh, we'll just put this one on, why not? Uh, that is huge. <laughs> uh, anyways, so here is you know our actor we've made, but how can we program our actor to do stuff, right? How do we, you know, we've initialized our actor, we've initialized a mesh and a little box component, but how can we make it do things like teleport around or you know, disappear completely? Well, we're going to get into that. So, to move a actor around, we're going to be utilizing the tick function. So if I just double click on my class, it's going to open up in the Visual Studio. And here we have the tick function. Now, if we're not using the tick function, we can set this to false. And that will improve performance, but we're going to be using the tick function, so we'll leave that for true for now. So we're going to use a counter to uh, count the milliseconds, or sorry, the frames rather. And to do that, I'm going to go in here and say float running time. So this is our counter basically. The first thing we're going to do is make a vector called new location. And we're going to set it equal to get actor location, which gets the actor's current location. So I want to um, help you to understand how we're making the the actor move around, right? So if you watch a movie, you'll be aware that a movie is just a bunch of still images, and they're played one after the other. But if you play them in really quick succession, it looks like an actual moving thing. Well, video games are the exact same. They have frames too, and basically, um, to make something move, we're just moving it a very tiny amount. But because there are going to be 60 new frames every second, it'll look like it's moving smoothly. Right, so it's the exact same concept uh, as a movie. So. The next thing we're going to do is create a float called delta height. And I'm going to I'm going to just type this out and then I'll explain what it means after I do it. Okay, so if math is a library that has the sine function in it, but why are we using sine, right? The reason we're using it is because by using sine, we get a fluctuating value that has a range of negative 1 to 1. And um, <laughs> yeah, this is going to start getting a little bit confusing, but basically we're using that to get a value of negative 1 to 1. So that means that we can move the sphere up and when it hits one it'll start going back down then when it hits negative one it'll start going up it'll hit one and then it'll start going back down to negative one again so we're getting a fluctuating value between negative one and one and we're using this value to move the um, the sphere or you know whatever mef, uh, mesh we've put on up and down so we're moving the actor up and down basically So we made uh, the vector new location. So now we want to ask, in what direction do we want to move our actor? I'm going to choose the z-axis, which means that our actor will be floating up and down. If you wanted to use x or y, it would move left or right or back and forth. But I want it to move up and down, so I'm going to choose the z-axis. So 
So the z axis plus equals delta height. So whatever the current value of z is, add that to delta height. And then we're going to times this by a scale of 20. Because otherwise it would be moving very, very slightly. If we increase the scale, it would move even faster, but 20 is a pretty good uh, scale. Now our running time variable, we're just going to say running time plus equals delta time. And delta time is a parameter that is passed to the tick function. Then we're just going to set the actor's location to that new location. So basically, 60 times a second we're setting the actor's location to a new location that is slightly above or below where it currently is. And by calling this 60 times a second, it's going to look like the actor is smoothly moving up and down. So uh, let's go back into the editor and hit compile. And I'm going to delete the current instance and drag a new one in. And now I'm going to put a mesh on it, so let's just choose um, one of our standard meshes. If you do any 3D modeling, you can put your own meshes in here, by the way, but these are ones that the Unreal Engine gives to you by default, so I'm going to make mine a chair. If we hit play, you can see that our chair is now floating up and down. So we've now programmed our actor to actually do something, and that looks kind of cool, it's like a floating, floating chair. Can we stand on it? No, oh, don't think we can, but anyways, you can see now we've actually added some, uh, some functionality to our actor, we're actually making our actor do something. And now, hopefully, you're beginning to understand, you know, how we can make our own custom actors and things like that. Um, if you want to think of, you know, a shooting game, a gun on the ground might be an actor, you know, and would walk up to the gun on the ground and it would, it would have it programmed so that it would say something like, you know, press F to pick up gun or something like that. So actors, you know, you can program them to do whatever you like. Uh, but yeah, that is adding functionality to actors and in the next tutorial I'll probably go over player input. So, you know, I might even do something like press F to pick up flashlight or something. Maybe we'll make a flashlight. but. Uh, anyways, I'll see you in the next tutorial.